Coming up on Lexington Now, we're always working to keep the environment clean and now we're kicking it up a notch. Holiday parking downtown, events this week in downtown, and new wet weather storage tanks in Lexington. This and more up next on this week's edition of Lexington Now. Roberts and welcome to another edition of Lexington Now where we give you an inside look at what's going on in the urban county government. The holiday shopping season is in full swing and Gary Means tells us all about where to park to take advantage of all of the shopping downtown has to offer. My name is Gary Means, Executive Director of the Lexington Parking Authority. The Victorian Square Garage is really handy for shops like the Broadway shops that are right inside the garage down on Broadway. Um, we've got uh, shops there, we've got shops across the street at the square, which you can walk across Broadway or conveniently use the Pedway um, to, to walk across to those shops. So there's a lot of great restaurants and, and um, new retail establishments in the square that you can easily get to from the Victorian Square Garage. And as you can see, there's a lot of spaces on the rooftop of the garage on almost any given day. And we've got great elevators that'll take you down to wherever you need to go if you have trouble getting around. We've always got a spot for you. Another great thing about parking downtown and in parking garages that we run is we've color-coded all the floors. A lot of times, one of the things when you're shopping, uh, you forget maybe where you left your car. And this makes it really easy to remember what floor you're on by the color coding. We have pretty good weather here in Lexington, typically in the wintertime, but sometimes it gets a little cold or a little rainy, but don't let that stop you when you want to go out shopping or dining. You can park in the Victorian Square garage and on the third level, walk right across that pedway and stay out of the rain, carry all your packages back to your car safely. Whenever you pull into a Lex Park garage, you hit the green button and a token will come out right here. But a really great way to get in and get out quickly is to use your credit card. We have a credit card in, credit card out feature. So you insert your credit card right here, the gate will go up, your time starts, and when you leave, you'll insert your credit card at the exit gate and you're home free. Also, when you're coming downtown, you never really have to be worried about are there enough spaces in a Lex Park garage because we've got those signs like the one behind me that tells you how many spaces are left. So when you're coming down shopping or coming down to a sporting event, check out those signs and you'll know how many spaces are left so you'll be comfortable pulling into the garage. Another great thing that you might notice when you come downtown shopping and parking in downtown Lexington is this crew. That's the new downtown Lexington Management District and they're out making these sidewalks cleaner and safer for all the shoppers and diners in downtown Lexington. When you pull into the parking lot that serves the Lexington Center Corporation and their shops and Rupp Arena, you're going to see a gate like this. Just hit the button, pull the ticket, and when you go to the shops, they'll validate your parking for you. So we're on the Lexington Center lot now. If you want to go shopping at the Lexington Center shops, you're going to find all kinds of parking on this lot that's on High Street. And the uh, folks that run the shops inside will validate your parking for you. You might be familiar with this lot if you've attended events at Rupp Arena, but it's a great place to park when you're going to go shopping with them as well. Another thing to keep in mind when you're downtown, we've talked about parking garages and parking lots, is the parking meters and also how to find out information about where parking is available and how much it might cost. We've got a great app called ParkMe that you can download free to your mobile device or you can look it up on your computer at home and it'll tell you what the rates are at all the different lots and garages in downtown and the availability about how full they are at any given time. And we've got another great app called Pay By Phone that works at our parking meters. You can download that as well to your mobile device and set up an account and that allows you to pay the meter, go to your meeting or your lunch or your shopping, and then 
um, if you're going to stay a little bit longer, it'll give you a reminder and says, hey, your meter's about to expire and you can extend your time right from where you're at so you don't have to run out and worry about getting a parking ticket. So that's the pay by phone app. And then for information about all the rates and, and things, the Park Me app works great for that. And then if you're interested in finding out about the kind of great shops that we have in downtown, you might want to look up LexingtonCenterShops.com. You, you could also go to the square lexington.com to find out about some of the great shops in the square and then downtown lexington.com has some great information about the different shops and restaurants in our great downtown well i hope you've picked up a lot of tips about parking downtown and for more information from the parking authority check out our website at lexpark.org And speaking of downtown, we are putting on our holiday best as we prepare for the upcoming holiday season. Here's what's happening downtown this week. Are you looking for things to do this week in downtown Lexington? All this week, the Unified Trust Company Ice Rink in Triangle Park is open at various hours. For more information, visit downtownlex.com. This Tuesday is the Lexington Christmas Parade presented by Metro PCS at 7 p.m. on Main Street between Midland Avenue and Mill Street. Lexington Christmas Parade is part of Luminate Lexington, presented by Kentucky Utilities Company. For more information, visit downtownlex.com. On Wednesday is the Lyric Theater's Art Therapy Luncheon Series from 11.30 until 1.30. This session will feature music by Willie Eames and food by Noodles & Company. For tickets and more information, visit lexingtonlyric.com. Then on Thursday at the downtown Lexington Public Library at the Ferris Theater is Jazz Live at the Library. Another jazzy Christmas show from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. All this weekend at the Lyric Theater, the Innovation Arts Academy presents Annie Jr. featuring everyone's favorite little orphan in her adventure to find her parents. For times, tickets, and more information, visit LexingtonLyric.com. On Friday at the Barbara Ann School of Dance, the Salsa Center will be having their Salsa Holiday Showcase from 8 p.m. until 11. For tickets and more information, visit thesalsacenter.com. Then on Sunday at the Square is All Tech Celebration of Song from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. If you're looking for something to do, Downtown Lexington has it all. Visit downtownlex.com or find us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. When you flush the toilet, wash your clothes, or brush your teeth, the excess water goes down the drain and into the sewer. But if that sewer gets full, that overflow could create a nasty problem. Thankfully, Lexington has a solution. They're called wet weather storage tanks. Charlie Martin explains. I'm out here today with Charlie Martin, the director of the Division of Water Quality, and we are in front of a really big tank. Charlie, can you tell us a little bit about the tank? This is the Lower Cane Run Wet Weather Storage Tank. Essentially, there's a, a pump station located behind it. It's been there since the 90s, and it has a tendency to overflow when we have a lot of rain. So the tank is being built to basically accept that overflow rather than going into the creek. That's a 10 million gallon tank, so you're right, that is a big, big tank. So you mentioned to me before that last year we would have ha we had several overflows and that the tank would have prevented most of those. Can you talk a little bit about it? Yeah, 2015 was a really wet year for us and uh, we would have had, we had to actually recorded 13 overflows at this location. If the tank would have been here, it would have accepted all of the flow except for one of those. And so that's, that's what we're doing here. Basically, you know, we were sued by EPA back in 2006 and part of the settlement of that of that uh, consent decree or that legal agreement was to uh, build infrastructure that eliminated overflows that happen on rainy days. Well, this tank is kind of unique because it is on the Legacy Trail. So tell me a little bit about what makes this tank different from the other ones we will be building around town. Well, you know, and all of them are unique because certain sites, you know, call for certain needs. We, you know, we want to try to blend in as much as you can with a tank of this size. <laughs> but uh, the fact that we were plopping this thing right down in the middle of the Legacy Trail was a concern of ours. It had to be here because we're at actually the low spot of what we call Lower Cane Run. And everything drains to the lowest spot in sewer world. So we had to be here, but because the trail 
trail was here, I didn't want us to stick in a, a big albatross right in the middle of it and everybody feel like they didn't get anything out of it. So we had some stakeholders meet with us, give us some ideas about some things that we could do that would be of a benefit to trail users. And the outcome of that is, is that there will be some, um, some landscaping and some scrim that kind of changes the appearance of the tank. But more importantly is a fairly generous amount of trees because we heard from a lot of folks who are bike and trail users that said we need shade. And we're also providing restroom facilities and kind of just a little break area that where you can pull off with your bike or what have you, sit down and relax. And hopefully over time, those trees and that landscaping will diminish some of the appearance of that tank to where it doesn't look so obviously huge. And at the same time, like I said, provide a place for people to, to, to basically to hang out. Well, there will be other tanks uh, throughout the uh, urban area. We've uh, Most people are probably familiar with the one that we built at Town Branch Wastewater Treatment Plant. You can see it from New Circle. Uh, we will have one in the Richmond Road area here sometime in the next couple of years. Again, uh, really concentrated around where the overflows have been in the past. And so uh, trying to balance that as far as being able to control the overflows, but also be sensitive to the neighbors and the neighborhoods. Um, the overall consent decree um, capital program is estimated at $590 million. Um, there's 10 tanks. They are 7% in the number of projects that we have to do, but they're 55% of the cost. So they're a huge component of what we're doing here and, and what we're looking at in the future. This tank behind us here costs roughly about $13 million at this point in time right now. It was originally estimated to cost 36. So we feel really, really good that we value engineered this and we were experiencing the same thing with the other tanks, that hopefully that $590 million expectation will be something significantly less than that. Coming up after the break, we'll tell you how we're cleaning up cigarette litter around town. Welcome to Your Health, starring your hands. On today's show, washing your hands. If people don't wash their hands often, especially when they're sick, they can spread germs directly to other people or onto surfaces that others touch. And before you know it, everyone has come down with something. It's important to wash your hands frequently with good soapy water. Here's some hand washing tips. Wash your hands after using the bathroom. Wash your hands after coughing or blowing your nose. Wash your hands before eating, serving, or preparing food. Wash your hands after playing with your pets or touching other animals. Wash your hands after outdoor activities. Wash your hands before and after visiting someone who's sick. Wash your hands when they get dirty. And wash your hands after changing those diapers. Thanks for watching Your Health, and remember, wash those hands frequently. Rainwater that washes down our storm sewers goes directly into our creeks and streams, taking with it what's on the ground. So if you leave a little litter or pet waste on a sidewalk near Versailles Road, it goes into Wolf Run Creek. Don't trash the bluegrass. Hello, I'm Detective Mark Thomas with the Lexington Police Department. You may also know me from Bluegrass Crime Stoppers. I'm here to talk to you a little bit today about a new texting system that we have available through any smartphone. In the body of your message, you can text LexPD plus your tip to crimes. When you're submitting anonymous information, we ask that you include several things that would help us conduct the investigations more thoroughly, such as a person's name, their home address, possible license plate numbers, any other people involved, or why you think that they're conducting the type of activity that you believe that they are. All of those things, no matter how small you believe they could be, are relevant to the investigation. So please include those. So remember, you can send your anonymous tip information either through text, you can call the Bluegrass Crime Stoppers anonymous tip line at 859-253-2020, or you can go online to bluegrasscrimestoppers.com. Thank you.
This message is brought to you by the U.S. Fire Administration. Have two ways out. When fire strikes, deadly smoke can fill your home within minutes. That's why the USFA wants you to plan and practice home fire drills. Draw a map of each level of your home showing all doors and windows. Discuss the map with everyone who lives with you. Practice your home fire drill at least twice a year. Make sure all doors and windows that lead outside open easily. Push the smoke alarm button to start the drill. Try feeling your way in the dark or with your eyes closed. Have at least two ways out of every room. If your first way out is blocked by fire or smoke, you can use your second way out. If there is smoke, get low and go. Crawl quickly under the smoke to your nearest exit. Close doors behind you and gather at a pre-planned outside meeting place where first responders can see you. Call 911. Remember, get out and stay out. Never go back inside for people, pets, or things. Learn more at www.usfa.fema.gov. back to the show. Lexington has won several awards for being a beautiful city, but I'll tell you what, there is nothing pretty about cigarette butts all over the ground. So we're working to clean up the streets thanks to a new grant. We got a $10,000 grant from Keep America Beautiful for cigarette litter prevention. For our project this year, we chose downtown bars and restaurants. Chef Renata participated in the program with us and kicked it off back in the spring. And I'm here today with my friend Ron from The Sweet Spot to talk about how the experience was for him. Brian, tell us more. Well, being right outside the bus stop, we have a lot of people just kind of just hang out on the sidewalk, and we were having quite a bit of cigarette butt problems, and luckily with the grant, we now, if you could look around, you'd see we are butt free. <laughs> we're happy to be able to provide that service to our downtown bars and restaurants. And if any of you happen to not have participated in the program, but you're interested, please give us a call at 311 and ask for Louise Caldwell to help get up, uh, and she'll help you get a urn for outside your property. So we're so happy to have participants like the Sweet Spot and the Lexington Diner participate with us. Our goal is to keep the cigarettes down and out of the water drains uh, and storm drains downtown, as well as the beautification side. No one wants to see ugly cigarette butts on the street. So we're so proud of all of our participants in this year's program, and we look forward to the next program. For more information about this grant and other environmentally friendly projects going on in town, you can log on to the city's website, lexingtonky.gov. When you call 911, you expect someone to quickly pick up the phone and get you help. Well, now we're getting quicker and our service is becoming better thanks to a new enhanced 911 center. We got a tour of the new facility from Director Robert Stack. What we have over here is a typical call taker position. And what we try Enhanced 911 the, uh, Director Robert Stack is giving us a tour of the new 911 telecommunicator uh, workstations. But what they have at their disposal is uh, monitors that show them the telephone call coming in, a monitor that shows them a map of where this call is coming from. They also have just regular internet that they can bring up if they want to look at uh, something on the internet. They have their computer-aided dispatch screens here. So they have a lot of resources available to them right here at these six monitors. They also have their own personal fans. And they, he uh, says they making the workstations high-tech so and comfortable means employees are happier and more productive. And the nice thing about these positions is they raise and lower. So if you're tired of sitting and you want to raise this position up, you can sit here and raise it all the way up. We want them to be comfortable, and as you can see in the, the wall behind me, they have uh, TV monitors to view weather. We require weather and news to be on at all times. We have a status monitor that shows who's busy in the room, uh, what kind of call they're on. We have surveillance cameras. We have traffic cameras. Uh, we have the ability from this room to control the traffic cameras. So we can uh, blank out an image. We can zoom in on an image to see uh, how many vehicles are involved in a collision. So there's a lot of information that these dispatchers and call takers here have available to them at all times. This is truly a state-of-the-art center. For more information about 911 services and how you can keep yourself safe before an emergency happens, log on to the city's website, lexingtonky.gov. The weather outside may be slowly but surely heading toward winter, but there are still plenty of leaves on the ground, which is why the city's annual vacuum leaf collection is still going on. The last couple of years we've collected around 1,500 tons uh, of leaves and we expect to collect that many and possibly more this year. 
Leaf collection is a big job in Lexington, Fayette County, but Rob Allen says his folks are more ready than ever to get going to help residents clear the leaves from yards and streets. The vacuum loose leaf collection program is for residents of Fayette County um, that get city trash pickup. Workers will be vacuuming leaves Monday through Saturday for extended hours. Several crews come by, a uh, big vacuum machine, and uh, suck them up. Then uh, we transport them to our yard waste landfill where they're turned into compost. You know, it's an aesthetic thing, plus it's uh, to keep the leaves out of the storm sewer system. We've had uh, quite a bit of leaf drop, and uh, what we don't want to see is those storm sewers get clogged up, and we have flooding, and then the temperature drops, and then you have ice. Neighborhoods will get one visit this season, so knowing your pickup time is important. And it's being made easier thanks to a new interactive website. Go to lexingtonky.gov forward slash leaves and there is a map uh, detailing the collection areas of the city. You can type in just your street or both your house number and your street and it'll tell you if you get collection, when that collection is scheduled for. Um, but we're also going to have a, a feature on that map as similar to what they do for garbage collection that's going to tell you leaf collection is on time, has been delayed by the weather, plus this map is going to contain information as far as streets we've completed, where we're at, and where we're going. Allen reminds citizens that only leaves should be piled up for pickup. It should be leaves only, no, no sticks, debris, dead critters, garbage. Uh, you know, those things uh, are a hazard to the workers and can also damage the equipment. And if you miss a pickup or don't have one scheduled, no worries. There are still ways to get rid of your fallen leaves. They can take their leaves out to the Haley Pike landfill, use uh, the yard waste bags so they get coupons for free bags if they call LexCall 311. And of course the yard waste continues their year-round pickup schedules. We've got another busy week here in the Urban County Government as council prepares for winter break. There are plenty of meetings going on, including planning and public safety committee, council work session and council meetings on Tuesday, and the planning commission meeting on Thursday. You can watch these meetings live on GTV3 or streaming on our website or you can watch any archive meeting anytime. And you can find a complete calendar of meetings and events at LexingtonKY.gov. Well, that is all for this week's edition of Lexington Now. We'll return next week with more news from your urban county government. But in the meantime, you can keep up with what we're doing by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. You can also get 24-7 traffic updates by following us on Twitter. Our handle is at LexRex. Or you can check out our live interactive cameras online at LexingtonKY.gov. For the staff and producers of GTV3, I'm Sherelle Roberts, and that's it for now. The preceding program was produced through the facilities of GTV3.